first reading today is from 1 Kings, chapter 3, verse 5 through 12, and page 524 in the Pew Bible. At Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon during the night in a dream, and God said, Ask whatever you want me to give you. Solomon answered, You have shown great kind kindness to your servant, my father David, because he was faithful to you and righteous and upright in heart. You have continued this great kindness to him, and have given him a son to sit on his throne this very day. Now, O Lord my God, you have made your servant king in place of my father David. But I am only a little child, and do not know how to carry out my duties. Your servant is here among the people you have chosen, a great people, too numerous to count or number. So give your servant a discerning heart to govern your people and to distinguish between right and wrong. For who is able to govern this great people of yours? The Lord was pleased that Solomon had asked for this. So God said to him, Since you have asked for this, but not for long life or wealth for yourself, nor have you asked for the death of your enemies, but for discernment and administering justice, I will do what you have asked. I will give you a wise and discerning heart, so that there will never be anyone like you, nor will there ever be. Here ends the first lesson. The second reading is from Romans 8, 28 through 38, on page 1757 to 58. And we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. For those God foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the likeness of his son, so that he might be the firstborn among many brothers. And those he predestined, he also called, and those he called, he also justified. Those he justified, he also glorified. During the week. Please stand for the reading of the Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 13th chapter, beginning at the 44th verse. The kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field. When a man found it, he hid it again, and then in his joy went and sold all he had and bought that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant looking for fine pearls. When he found one of great value, he went away and sold everything he had and bought it. Once again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net that was let down into the lake and caught all kinds of fish. When it was full, the fishermen pulled it up on the shore. Then they sat down and collected the good fish in baskets, but threw the bad away. This is how it will be at the end of the age. The angels will come and separate the wicked from the righteous and throw them into the fiery furnace, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Have you understood all these things, Jesus asked. Yes, they replied. He said to them, Therefore every teacher of the law who has been instructed about the kingdom is like the owner of a house who brings out his, of, his, of his storeroom new treasures as well as old. The Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. <clears throat> Dear brothers and sisters, grace and peace be to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Last week, I had a very interesting experience, the likes of which I will probably not have for a long time, if even ever. First of all, we all celebrated communion together, where we remembered Jesus' great love for us by his sacrifice for us on the cross. Then, after worship, we celebrated and rejoiced with, with uh, Braden Walters as, and his family as he was baptized 
And then I was privileged to celebrate Braden's first birthday along with his family. Then, later on in the evening, I was privileged to participate in the ordination of Christopher Boyd, Marvin Heilman's grandson, who has been called to serve at a church in Port Clinton as their pastor. These are all signs, these are all indications that the Holy Spirit is moving among us and that the kingdom of God is, um, is truly among us. The Holy Spirit and the kingdom of God are among us in the bread and wine, in the body and blood of Jesus, as he changes us to become more and more like him. In fact, as, as Don read for us just a few moments ago, that is why we are here, because every day we are being conformed to the likeness of Jesus. The, like, the likeness of Jesus reflecting who he really is. This being conformed and this being made to be part of God's family, part of the kingdom, begins in baptism. And I encourage all of you to pray for Braden as he continues to grow as a Christian and as God continues to work in him more and more to make him more like Jesus. This happens through the ministry of the word and sacrament. And so I also encourage all of you to pray for Christopher as he begins his new ministry of word and sacrament to the people of Port Clinton. And I encourage all of you to pray for Christopher as he, can, as he too continues to grow and deepen in his understanding, not only of what it means to be a Christian who is part of the kingdom, but also so that he is able to teach and set the example for others who, um, as to what it means to be a Christian and be part of the kingdom. What is the kingdom of God? As we hear in today's gospel reading, it is something that is worth far more than anything else. Anything else we might value, anything else we might think to be important or take preeminence above everything else, pales in comparison to the wonderful privilege, to the wonderful blessing of being part of God's kingdom, part of God's family. God's kingdom can also not be identified with one particular country, one particular group, one particular church or denomination, or one political party, or so social, moral, or theolo theological, or political philosophy. Instead, God's kingdom is expansive and includes everyone who are part of his family. Again, we become part of God's family through baptism. And as part of his family, just as when we are part of an earthly family, our families raise us to, our, our families raise us in a, cer in a certain way instilling in us certain certain values and certain characteristics that are important that are important to our families so too as part of God's family God is changing us more and more and continually raising us to become more and more like his son especially becoming more and more like his son in demonstrating love and compassion to all people we also always have to keep in mind that the kingdom of God cannot be limited to those whom we may want to limit to, to the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God frequently includes people who surprise us and who we may not even imagine are part of the kingdom of God. And what this takes is the ability to see things, to see people the way God sees them. This ultimately takes wisdom, the same kind of divine wisdom which Solomon asked God for in our first reading from 1 Kings, which again, Don read for us just a few moments ago. We are to pray for a wise and discerning heart to be able to really understand what it means to be part of God's kingdom and God's family 
and to be able to see and accept everybody who believes in God, who has been baptized, and who has been called by God as part of his family. It is a wonderful privilege indeed, and one that we are to treasure and treasure for others, the fact that we have been called. Even before we were born, God decided that we were going to be part of his family. Even before we were born, God decided that we were going to be his child. Even before we were born, as St. Paul says in Romans, we, we were called, we were justified, meaning that God has already forgiven our sins, and God has already said that we are worth everything, so we are his children, and we are glorified. We are made to be God's children, an even greater privilege than anything else we could possibly want or imagine. We are glorified because we are destined for eternal glory. We are destined for eternal life, destined for eternal life with God, which Jesus has made possible by his death on the cross, achieving our justification and the forgiveness of our sins, and achieving glory for us by rising again. When we rise again to, immor to immortality and eternal life, we will not have even the same bodies that we have now, but we will have immortal bodies, bodies that cannot be corrupted, bodies that do not decay, bodies that do not die, bodies that do not sick, that do not get sick, bodies that last forever, because we will last forever with God. And all this is happening even now. The kingdom is also not something that we look forward to after we die. The kingdom is something that we are part of right here, right now. Because we are part of God's family right here, right now. And as part of God's family, we are always to remember and remember for others that we are treasured, we are valued in God's eyes more highly than anything else. As Rick Warren says, nobody values you more than God. You are his precious possession. You are the pearl of great price, whom God went to every great length possible to be able to purchase and save, again, even by sending his son to shed his own blood as a sacrifice. You are the treasure hidden in a field whom God decided you are going to be mine. You are going to be part of my family, which I am going to treasure above everything else. God, God once again, was even willing to pay the ultimate price of the sacrifice of his son so that he could purchase you as his treasure. Never forget, dear brothers and sisters, that you are of greater value to God than anything else. You have greater worth than anything else. God looks at you and he says, you are mine. I care for you, I value you, I treasure you, I love you. Once again, nobody values you more than God. You are his precious possession. And as his precious possession, you have a great destiny. You have a destiny which was decided for you to which you were called even before you were born. A destiny which, was made, which you were made part of in baptism. A, bap, a destiny into which you were called and adopted as you became a child of God in baptism. When you were joined to Jesus' death and resurrection, your sins were forgiven and you were given the promise of eternal life and eternal glory. 
This is your precious destiny. This is your destiny to which you are to hold on and treasure. Your being part of the kingdom and your being part of God's family is something that you are to treasure as your greatest possession. Always hold on to, never take for granted, and always remember that no matter what else may happen in your life, no matter where you are in your life, you are treasured by God. That is to be your treasured possession. The fact that God loves you, he cares for you, he treasures you, and you are worth more to him than anything else. God has paid the ultimate price for you. God has purchased you by having Jesus die and rise again for you. Always treasure this wonderful gift the fact that you have been purchased by God, you have been called by God, you are part of his family, and you are destined for glory. Let us all, dear brothers and sisters, treasure this great gift, treasure this great gift in others, and always remember, you are loved. And now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, Keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen.